it was your abraso. We are unraveling your mysteries in your post incarnate era. Yes, so now we are going to be able to do it. Amen. Now, we have been talking about the image to the beast, that is the general theme. But then the sub theme or the subtitle is the beast. The same yesterday, today, and forever. We've picked this theme and then we have been breaking it into smaller, smaller components. So the baby to me, Enya and Tiasie, Ewo Erade Asimu. In Revelation chapter 14, verse 9, and the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, God is warning us against the beast and his image. Erade Chiri. Now on Pese Yebehu, now on Pe Ehumpo, a likeness of the original image will be in Funi, a likeness, Nensasu. So the image to the beast is a likeness of the original beast. A dear set beast, you know, that is what they will be doing. And in the Hebrews 13, verse 8, it was Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. Christ in his pre incarnate stage, we have done discussing it. Christ in his incarnate stage, we are done discussing it. And then we have moved to Christ in his post incarnate stage. Likewise, the beast in his pre incarnate, incarnate, and post incarnate. In our last discussion, we discussed how um, the birth of the disciples, the generals, on the part of Christ, the disciples, the apostles, on the part of the Antichrist, the Jesuits, the Jesuits. And then we saw how counter opponents became lovers and enemies. In fact, when you read Philippians chapter 3, verse 5, this is what Paul says. Oh, see, circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law, a Pharisee. So who was Paul? He was the Pharisee. Verse 6, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. So Paul affirms, in fact, he was a trusted, he was a confidant of the Pharisees. He had championing, he had training him to come and war against Christians. Unfortunately, Damascus, also, he encounters Christ and everything changes. The once vibrant enemy of the truth had now become the champion of the truth. The opposite is the same. Who had become opponents of the Antichrist during the Middle Ages? The Protestants. They had gone into a land of freedom. At the year, my refer complacency. The followers had compromised. The ones enemies of the antichrist according to the bible will set out the enemy to the beast the beast that came out from the land that is america protestant protestant america will cause the earth to receive the image they will set up just as the disciples of christ the apostles of christ yes was someone to prepare to set up the original image through them. Now the beast is working through Protestant America to set up its counterfeit image. This is what happened. And this is what we are being warned against. And let's begin by asking these questions. Did the nature of Christ change after his resurrection? We've said no in John chapter 20, verse 27 and 20. Then saith he, that is Jesus to Thomas, reach hither thy finger and behold my hands, and reach hither thy hand and trust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believe in 28. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. So Christ, after his resurrection, was fully human fully god because he touched his hand means he was human and then verse 20 said my god means he was god so christ after his death and resurrection re- remained human divine so the question is did the nature of the antichrist change after his resurrection people are saying the antichrist has changed the bible says the antichrist has not changed he has not changed in revelation chapter 13 verse 3 and i saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death and his deadly wound was healed and all the world wandered after the beast the antichrist power has not changed now who did christ promise to help the apostles in their mission 
Were they to do the work alone? The answer is no. In Luke chapter 24, verse 49. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. So Christ promised them of the Holy Spirit in Acts chapter 2, verse 1 to 3. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing wind, mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them clothing tongues like as of fire. And sat, and it sat upon each one of them. Now, the question is that they were imbued with the Holy Spirit. Christ goes into hiding. He sends forth his Holy Spirit upon his disciples. The Antichrist goes into hiding. Upon his disciples, the Jesuits, and the Jesus, the apostles, the apostles will be to the Paul, and the women say, why not the Jesus? No, the Protestants. The Protestants. So Paul is a type of the Protestants. So what spirit? What spirit do we today see in the Christian world? Is it that true spirit is sunny well seen for us? Where from this whole charismatic movement? Is it in harmony with Bible truth? Or it contravenes? It is, it is a different spirit at work. In Revelation chapter 13 verse 11, And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamp, and he spake as a dragon. Verse 13, And he doeth great wonders. Where do we see wonders? Question. Did they do wonders? Yes. Today, we see Protestants, we see the Christian world, wonders, wonders, miracles. The Bible says, The beast out of the earth, Protestant America, he doeth great wonders. So that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. Fire. So we see fire coming down from heaven upon the disciples, the true apostles. We see fire coming down from, quote and unquote, heaven upon Protestant America. But what was the role of the Holy Spirit that Christ promised his apostles in his mission? In John chapter 16 verse 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. Verse 8. And when he is come, one, he will reprove the word of sin. Two, and of righteousness. Three, and of judgment. Verse 13. How be it when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself. But whatsoever he shall hear, that he shall speak, and he will show you things to come. Verse 14, he shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you. Christ glorified the Father. The Holy Spirit glorifies Christ. Christ leads souls to the Father. The Holy Spirit leads souls to Christ. You see the condescension. That This is the connection. This is the chain. So, this is the work of the Holy Spirit. The counterfeit is the same. What was the outcome of the output of the Holy Spirit? Did they preach remission of sin? The answer is yes. They preached remission of sin. Exactly as Christ has said. In Acts chapter 2 verse 37 and 38. Verse 38. Was it? Then Peter said unto them, Repent. Remission of sin. And be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. Exactly the work of the Holy Spirit, exactly the work of the dead apostles. Unity, harmony. Now, what is sin? If the apostles are preaching remission of sin, what is sin? In 1 John 3, verse 4, whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. So they preached about the law. Say so you have transgressed the law. So confess your sin. You transgressed the law. Now, do Christians today? Preach repentance of sin? The answer is yes. But do they preach that there is the existence of the law? The answer is no. So what gospel is going on out there? You see the contrast? The, no, so check the contrast. Peter and Sion have affirmed the law. What transgress here? Why you Today, Christians say the law is no more. What transgress What transgress it? You've transgressed what? So you see the difference way fire. As we have no Protestant Christians, fire. But who homono? Eba, she need you media 
Who saw one woman in our and not even one homepa and a one home bonnet? Two, if they heal the sick, that is physical restoration. That's yes, Acts chapter 3, verse 1 to 7. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour, and a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple, who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked an alms. Verse 4, And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look at us! And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give, give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. They healed physically. Exactly. A servant is not greater than the master. Moral restoration, remission of sins, physical restoration, healing the sick, double work, physical and moral restoration. No. They spoke in tongues. Is that not the case? The answer is yes. In Acts chapter 2 verse 4. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Today, do the Christian world do a lot of healing and wonders in their churches? The answer is yes. But what kind of healing and wonders is going on? The answer will be seen very soon. Two, the apostles spoke in tongues. Now the question is that, did the people around understand the tongues spoken by the apostles? The answer is yes. In Acts chapter 2, verse 5 to 8. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. Now, when this was noise abroad, abroad, sorry, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. They understood what the apostles were saying. They understood it. They have preached remission of sins. In other words, they are pointing souls back to Christ, the sin pardoning Savior in heaven. They healed. They speak in tongues because the Holy Spirit had descended on them. The true Holy Spirit that Christ had promised. They speak in tongues. The people understand what they are saying. The people there understand the tongues that they were speaking. In verse 7, And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these we speak Galileans? You see, in verse 6, he talks about language. In verse 7, he says, speak language. So tongues, in Acts chapter 2, verse 2, no everybody will cut tongues. And in verse 6, I said, language. So tongues are your language. Kasa. In verse 8, and how hear we every man in our own language wherein we were born. Very interesting. Now, here's a contrast. Now. Christ ascends to heaven. He sends his spirit down to his representatives on earth. And they speak earthly language, which is understandable to the disciples and their listeners. Very interesting. Check the contrast. The Antichrist descends to the bottomless priest. He sends his spirit up to his representatives on earth. And they speak heavenly language, which is not understandable, both to their disciples and their listeners. And the tongues in the 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 Whereas when the Spirit came upon the apostles, original, this was the mission of Christ, salvation. They spoke, they understood, the listeners understood. And then we speak tongues. We say it is the Holy Spirit. Please, the Antichrist is alive. To me, our time is alive. He's working through the same folder who once hated the enormous father for. Just as Paul made friends with Christ and his disciples. Now, when he has imposed what he Paul in Usru, and the Protestants are in bed with the Babazi. Once enemies have become friends, is it the same spirit at work? Test it in Acts chapter 2, verse 11. Crete and Arabians. Almost say, we do hear them speak in our tongues. The wonderful works of God. I didn't want at that time. Yes, we don't understand. How can you stand before Otumfo and saying something you don't understand? And speak to him. Yami boy is sending suman as unintelligible people. 
Now, what did the apostles do? They led the people to the truth. John chapter 16, verse 13 and 14 tells us. Now, what is truth? John 14, 6. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth. So apostles, they led the new converts to Christ because Christ is the truth. Acts chapter 4, verse 12. Acts chapter 17, John, sorry, John 17, 17. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. They led them back to thy word. Okay, Acts chapter 2. Peter spent time to explain the word of God. And the Bible said the crown will be The Bible has been suppressed. And emphasis now what you have Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. Peter, he sent them back to the word. And then won't come crumble. The emphasis is no longer on the word. The emphasis is on the what the spirit, spirit, spirit. So Jesus said, He will glorify me. He will lead you to He will lead you back to me. And the one who lead in your member to who? In Psalms 119, verse 142, the third definition of truth. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. Peter must say, You have sinned. Come Transgression of the law. They extolled the law. And then Christos said, The law is irrelevant. What is happening? What kind of spirit is at work? Please, please pick your Bibles and compare. Romans chapter 7, verse 12. Wherefore the law is holy and the commandment holy and just and God is bringing us back in conformity to his law, the image, the character, this is the mission of Christ. What did John 8 verse 11? Or catch him very much, go and sin no more. In other words, go and obey the law. And the Christos What is happening? What did they do again? They rebuked the traditions of the Jews. And they are compared apostles. Yes, who come or do a mobile? And in the year, yes, yes, we have the spirit. What is happening? Let's compare. And here, because the Bible says there has been a compromise. Colossians chapter 2, verse 8. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. After the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after the Christ. Paul, yes, we have they condemn the traditions of the Jews. And then, tradition. And a tradition all the way. Do Christians today worship on Sunday? Look at what Paul did. Christ in his pre incarnate stage, he established the Sabbath. Christ came in his incarnate stage, he worships on the Sabbath. Post incarnate, Acts chapter 16, verse 13. And on the Sabbath, we went out of the city by a riverside where prayer was wont to be made. Is the servant greater than the master? Yes, you see, the idea is the same. You are and now what they are protestants and christians in general championing is it the sabbath or sunday whose spirit is at work let's judge for ourselves do christians today worship on sunday which is a tradition of the catholic church number two do christians today celebrate christmas which is a tradition of the catholic church do christians today celebrate easter which is also a tradition of the catholic church exactly as paul and the disciples rebuke tradition today protestants have extolled tradition. Then he had championed the cause of the prophecy. Oh no, really. At the times of ignorance, he winks at in Acts chapter 17, verse 30. Christ is appealing to each one of us. We are to come back in harmony to his truth. Pray incarnate, Sabbath. Incarnate, Sabbath. Post incarnate, Sabbath. Beast. Pray incarnate, Sunday. Incarnate, Sunday. Post incarnate, Sunday. It does not change. Christ too has not changed. Lie, no, no, no. Any answer, no. Now, when the message needed to go across the world, God raised the learned Paul. No crap. And then he raised the learned Luke for the work of physical restoration. He was called the beloved physician. In Tinyame, I did the work of the physician. I attached physical restoration. In other words, the work of physical healing. You did the apply, BB. I'm in the penya, Yarisa. Yesu. And I'm the two who raise a physician look because Christ Himself was the great physician. Now, the question that we will be asking in our next discussion is that do we have counterfeit gospel? The answer is yes, it doesn't point people to the truth, it 
it doesn't point people to the word. It doesn't point people to the law. Then do we have counterfeit physician, counterfeit physical restoration? Unlike that which Luke did, the answer is yes. If we have counterfeit moral restoration, then we have counterfeit physical restoration. So Colossians 4 verse 14, Paul said, look the beloved physician. 2 Timothy 4 verse 11, he said, only Luke is with me. So Paul, the preacher of the gospel, look the medical missionary, son, your friend, the, the, the work of the physician, Bible, your friend, medical missionary, medical missionary, it was bound up. Out of all, Something interesting. They still held to the health message of God. In our next discussions, we are going to look at it in greater detail. We have been duped. Encounter be a compromise, baby. That is why we are championing deception. How be it unknown to us? Oh yes, we didn't Amen. Yeah, it was here. What's my sabah? My own church train. Oh Jesus Christ, didn't Amen.